Hello everyone, welcome again. Today we'll be talking about chemical monitoring and management and the ozone layer. But specifically this lesson, we'll be talking about the structure of the atmosphere. In previous lessons we've talked about what comes up, what is part of the atmosphere, but now we're going to talk about how that atmosphere is structured to serve different purposes for the Earth and its, and its inhabitants. So here's a picture of just the sky and over open ocean. As you can see, there's already different segments of the atmosphere that you can see. There's the blue sky at the top, as well as white clouds. And each of those has a role, as well as a reason why it's there. So in this lesson, we'll study what, we're, what each part does and how it helps us as humans. So the first thing to note about the atmosphere and its structure is that it's definitely not a uniform um, object. For instance, if you look at say, the ocean. The ocean is not uniform, neither is the surface of the Earth. So likewise, the atmosphere is not likely to be a uniform structure either. So from the bottom to the top, so this would be ground level, we'd consider ground level, there's a very thin layer of air called the troposphere, followed by a slightly thicker layer, but less air, less actual matter, called the stratosphere. And as we go up further and further away from the Earth's surface, we have less and less particles in the air, but more size in terms of thickness. So from the bottom we have a very thin layer to the very top where we have a very thick layer, but very rarefied or very um, dispersed gas at the top. So there are four major regions, the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Um, and each layer is separated by very abrupt changes in temperature. So from the troposphere to the stratosphere, say, there is a very abrupt change here of temperature because of varying different effects from solar radiation as well as the Earth's surface. Now the four regions, the troposphere is the bottom one, the stratosphere, like I mentioned, is the second, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Combined, the thermosphere and the mesosphere are sometimes referred to as the ionosphere. So if you see that, that's just what it's talking about in that case. So here we have, it's written, the ionosphere as well. So we'll talk more closely about what each region is and how it affects us. So the first region is the troposphere. And this is the one that we are most uh, sort of uh, we're the most familiar with because it's the one that we live in. So this is between 0 and 20 kilometers from the Earth's surface. So like most humans, we live on the Earth's surface and 20 kilometers is quite a long distance away. And this is where the climate that we experience occurs as well as various other, um, as well as most of the gases so that we can breathe as well as um, plants can uh, photosynthesize and all those kind of things. So like it says, it represents the first 10 to 15 kilometers of altitude, altitude meaning height, from the Earth's surface. And it contains most of the atmosphere's mass. So by that we mean that when we look at the atmosphere as a whole, most of its material is within the first uh, troposphere and the rest is just spread between the other three layers that we just mentioned. Um, and here, like I mentioned earlier, the Earth's weather events happen in the troposphere. So all of the things that we experience, like wind, hurricanes, rain, will all occur in, within the troposphere. Particularly within this layer, the temperature decreases as we go upwards. So as we increase the altitude, as in going upwards, there's a decrease in temperature, so it gets colder in other words. So if you were a mountain climber, you would experience colder temperatures at the top of the mountain compared to at the bottom. Now the troposphere contains all of the gases that are essential for us, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide for plants, and as well as water vapor. And it also plays a critical part in the water cycle. So as mentioned in another lesson, we have transport occurring because clouds and other evaporated water get pushed around by wind 
which is, occurs in the troposphere. And so this moves water from one place to another. And the major gases include nitrogen, oxygen, water, argon, and carbon dioxide. So next part is the, tropos as the stratosphere. Sorry. Now this happens between 15 and 50 kilometers in altitude. This is the area where the ozone layer is. So we'll talk more about what the ozone, is, ozone layer is in a second. But the stratosphere is the next layer above the troposphere. And it's interesting to note that this air region has a temperature rise compared to the top of the troposphere. So the temperature increases abruptly at the end of the troposphere and starts at, and that signals the start of the stratosphere. Now this is also the highest that airplanes can reach. So like I said, as we go up away from the Earth's surface, there becomes less and less air or less and less mass. And so if you have a jet engine, for instance, it needs to have a constant influx of oxygen to burn its fuel. So it means that somehow we need to extract push more oxygen through that engine if we're higher up because we need because the air is less dense so there's less of it around so very special technology allows us to reach very high altitudes with this within this stratosphere layer and here the pressure so we mentioned air pressure it's in another lesson as well so air pressure is how much air is pushing down on us is less in the stratosphere than it is in the troposphere. Obviously, because there is less mass, if we're up there, there's less pushing down, so the pressure is less. And it also means that the particles are more spaced out, meaning that there's also less air pressure because they're more, uh, they're further spaced away from each other. Now, the important gases in this region are nitrogen. So nitrogen kind of permeates all of the atmosphere, so it's obvious that it's going to be part of this layer. Oxygen, otherwise jet engines wouldn't work, as well as ozone. So we mentioned the ozone layer was very important, and so it is a major constituent of the stratosphere as well. Now the mesosphere and the thermosphere, or jointly referred to as the ionosphere, as I mentioned before, is the top two layers of the atmosphere. So from 50 to 85 kilometers above the Earth's surface is where this layer starts, and the thermosphere starts from anywhere above 85 kilometers. So it's a very, very high altitude area, but it possesses very little air. So the spacing between molecules is very, very large at these altitudes. So they're basically, you've got almost free particles flying around with basically no, spa with basically no particles between them. So gases in this region include ions. So when the sun bombards the Earth's atmosphere with radiation. It tends to ionize some of the gases. So we get you know, oxygen ions, uh, nitrous oxide ions, and you know, other types of ions that just happen because we've got such high energy radiation occurring. We have single atoms because that radiation, again, continues to break down the gases present in the atmosphere. So we can have free atoms flying around in the ionosphere, as well as free electrons. Because if we have ions, then those electrons had to come from, had to be, exist at some point. So they act as free electrons. Um, at lower altitudes, there'd be too much in the way to sort of allow these electrons to live stably. However, because there's so much space in these layers, these electrons can be stable to a certain extent. So with pressure, we mentioned that pressure decreases sort of with when there's less air above us. But really what happens is it decreases exponentially. So as you can see this curve here, when we're at zero altitude, it's at a maximum, and then decreases very, very, very rapidly when, as we continue to go up in altitude. So this is exponential decay in this case. Now, this is reflected by the distance um, or the amount of mass present in each layer. So the, the troposphere, the very smallest layer, the, and the one closest to this Earth's surface, has the most mass. So it has the highest pressure, because there's the most sitting on top of whatever is measuring this pressure. 
Whereas as we go up, um, so as we go up, only 10 or so percent of the atmosphere is above us. Then, of course, the pressure must be less because there's less mass pushing down on our bodies. So another way of looking at it is using the mean free path. So the mean free path is if you imagine that you have particles moving around at random in, in the gas, the mean free path is the distance before two particles would collide through this random motion. So at sea level, it's very, very small. This is 10 to the minus 7 meters, the mean free path. So an atom could only, or molecule could only travel so 0.1 micrometer before it strikes another atom or particle. Whereas at an altitude of 120 kilometers, so up this way up this range, the mean free path is one meter. So 10 million times bigger than what it was at sea level. So the pressure is then reduced based on the mean free path. So this wraps up the theory of the structure of the atmosphere, as well as how each layer interacts with us, as well as how each layer interacts with each other to produce certain effects. And so we'll continue on to reinforce all this information with some questions. So question one, or oh, question six in this case. Um, which of the following graphs illustrate the layered structure of the atmosphere? So here you have four choices. And so we'll start with A. We have the troposphere at the top, the thermosphere at the bottom, the stratosphere in the middle, and the mesosphere third. So this is wrong in the sense that while the stratosphere and mesosphere are in the right place, the troposphere is actually at the bottom and the thermosphere is at the top. So obviously this can't be correct. So B, so we have troposphere and thermosphere now in the right place, but this is still wrong because, like I just said, the mesosphere and the stratosphere were in the right place in the previous part, so these are now in the wrong place. See, we've got the troposphere at the top, so this must be wrong instantly because we always know the troposphere is always going to be at the bottom. And lastly, D, which is correct. The thermosphere is at the top, furthest away from the Earth's surface. The mesosphere is next, followed by the stratosphere and troposphere as we go down to the Earth's surface. So these, this is the most correct answer. Now if that's OK, we'll move on to question 7, which is, what is the name given to the layer of the Earth the atmosphere closest to the Earth's surface? So here we have the diagram from before. The troposphere is at the bottom, and the thermosphere is at the top, so the answer must be the troposphere. So question eight is, where in the atmosphere is the temperature highest? Okay, so when we talked about the atmosphere, the troposphere said that as we go up in altitude, the temperature decreases, then there's a sudden abrupt change in temperature that jumps up when we get to the stratosphere. But where is it actually the highest? Well, it's highest in the thermosphere. So if you think of the words, or how to help remember um, this, thermo usually implies to me heat anyway. Or whenever I think thermo, I think something to do with heat. And obviously sphere just means sphere. So the thermosphere has something to do with heat, and that's how I remember the temperature. The next question is, obviously, why is it the highest? If it's so far away from the Earth's surface, that really is an interesting point to note that this would be the, temp the highest temperature. Now, in order to answer this, we need to remember what's happening outside at the very outermost part of the Earth's atmosphere. You have radiation striking from the sun, and this causes electrons and atoms and bonds to break. So the answer is, if it's closest to the sun, it's heated by solar radiation. So what we experience on Earth is much, much more filtered than what we experience at the very outermost parts of the atmosphere. So this outermost region is struck by a much greater amount of radiation than we are at Earth, so at Earth's surface level. So its temperature tends to be much higher than the one than what we experience on the surface of the Earth. So physics students will be familiar with the, the concept of the solar wind. So that wind comes across and bombards our atmosphere, creating a high temperature region. Now, if we move on to question nine, we have 
compare the gases found in the troposphere, stratosphere, and ionosphere. So remembering that each layer has a different composition based on how close it is to the Earth's atmosphere, but also each layer has different composition for different functions. So firstly, the troposphere. Remember, it contains all the gases that we need to survive. So nitrogen, oxygen, some carbon dioxide, and water with some amount of argon. So these four require, are required for life between plants and animals. The stratosphere contains nitrogen because it's the largest component, as well as oxygen and ozone, where that ozone is very helpful in filtering out that really harsh UV radiation that could damage our bodies. And finally, the ionosphere, which is that mesosphere and thermosphere combined together, have a lot of unstable particles like ions, electrons, and free atoms. We ordinarily wouldn't be able to experience these at Earth level, at Earth surface level, but because there's so much space between atoms, uh, between particles in this region, we can see the existence of these ions and free atoms and electrons. Now, if we move on to question 10, how does the pressure in the troposphere compare to the pressure in the stratosphere? Now, what we have to do is look at how the pressure varies between uh, varies in the atmosphere when altitude increases, because the stratosphere is, of course, above the troposphere. Now, the pressure decreases exponentially, like I showed you with that graph. That graph had a very steep decline as we increased altitude. Because the stratosphere is higher altitude, it has a much lower pressure than the troposphere at the lower altitude. So, of course, the stratosphere has a much lower pressure than the troposphere. So this concludes this lesson on the structure of the atmosphere. So today we've looked at the structure of the atmosphere, what the layers are, what each part does for us as living organisms, as well as we've looked at how pressure interacts with the altitude as we go up. So next week we'll look at how what pollutants are going into the atmosphere, as well as some how humans are affecting the atmosphere around us. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.